Okay, well, we're going to be sticking with the um, wet stuff. I wasn't quite sure whether I needed to run on them, but uh, I'll try and stick to my, um, my five minutes. Um, so, basically, I'm going to be talking about some of the... Uh, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about some specific uh, bits of research that we're doing in terms of the ecosystem services which are provided by upland river water um, catchments. And uh, before I go in too much detail on that. I just want to talk a little bit about ecosystem services because I know that some of you may well not have come across this term, some of you may have. So I want to basically define that. Um, talk a little bit about the river water catchments and then finish up where we're going uh, in terms of our collective expertise within the, um, the School of um, Geography, Earth and Environmental Sciences. So first of all, ecosystem services. Now this is something that's been around for a while. Um, it's, um, it's nothing new, placing a value, a monetary value, on the, um, the services that our semi-natural habitats provide us. Um, but it's certainly in the last 10 years, it's kind of, um, it's gained some momentum, um, particularly uh, when we're looking at the collective value that our um, semi-natural systems provide us. So not just thinking necessarily of, um, of food or fresh water or um, the provisioning services, but also the regulating and the cultural services. So these are all things that... Um, that our um, semi-natural systems provide us. And it's a very powerful case that can be made to politicians and um, policy makers when we're lobbying them about the collective um, services that systems provide. So we tend to, in science, be very siloed. So this is a kind of way of getting us away from that. I'm an environmental scientist. It's something that I'm kind of um, I'm really passionate about, that kind of joined up thinking. Uh, the perversity, of course, is is that particularly for regulating and cultural services, is, um, is that we don't often put a value on those particular um, um, regulating cl and uh, particularly climate and uh, flood regulation, etc. So it's kind of moving forward to a position where we're, we can basically do that. Now, my kind of background, I suppose, getting up to the, the kind of uplands and looking at uh, water catchment, I started off working for the water companies, and the water companies, particularly in catchment management, have been the kind of pioneers. So I was working with United Utilities um, up on the northern catchments of um, Pennines and Peak District on their sustainable catchment management plans, whether they were actually looking to see uh, whether their, matchment, their management they were having in the catchment was actually having a positive effect. So we had kind of uh, sub-catchments and, and looking at uh, where they'd done works and to see whether there was improvement in water quality in particular. And then moving on to the kind of policy level, working with the International Union for the Conservation of Nature uh, for the peatlands inquiry and basically talking about um, the collective good of our peatlands and uh, trying to get policy change. So, and then closer to home, Southwest Water um, and Southwest Water's upstream thinking project, uh, where they're working with Dartmoor and Exmoor National Parks and looking particularly with their Myers project at restoring the, the upland areas. So there's a lot of good work that's, that's going on, I suppose, uh, within this particular, um, this particular kind of area. Now, in particular, the upstream thinking, there's a, a value multiplier on the restoration that goes into their um, peatland restorations of 1 to 65. So for every one pound they spend on upland uh, management, they get a 65 pound return in terms of enhancement of things like water quality and flood risk assessment and, and um, biodiversity, etc. Et so it's quite difficult to put a monetary value on these things, but um, it's really important if we're to get the message across. One of the things that I'm working on in particular is what value we place on sphagnum moss. Now, sphagnum is a very kind of um, underthought of plant indeed in that it um, sequesters carbon, takes carbon from the atmosphere and locks it up long term in our, um, in our upland um, um, bogs as well as purifying our water, acting as a sponge and holding onto our water and giving a kind of slow release. Ecosystem services, well these are they. Uh, water quality and supply, 70% of our water comes from the uplands. Biodiversity, it's the most extensive semi-natural um, area within the UK, our peatland areas where our waders and wildfowl birds go to breed in the summer months. Carbon storage, we've got two times the amount of carbon in our peatlands in the UK than all of the forests in the UK and France combined. Um, flood risk alleviation, we're basically looking at um, storage of water and, and a slowing of the release, the peak flows, um, which is such a problem. Recreation, 11 million day visitors to Dartmoor each year. How important is that economically? But there are lots of problems. 80% of our upland peatland catchments are damaged um, by agricultural drainage in particular, but also forest planting. We've got 1,500 square kilometres of forest planting on our deep peats. Atmospheric pollution, if you go up to the Pennines and Peak Districts, we've got um, peats of less than three, uh, pH of three with sulphur deposition. 
Grouse management, 15% of our um, uplands are actually burnt. Uh, what effect does that have on our, um, on our kind of uh, upland catchments? The way we want to really take this forward and the collective good, I've been talking a lot about carbon, but basically, going back to um, Tim's Elwick, Living with Environmental Change, what we'd like to do, basically, is look particularly at evaluating the resilience of river catchment ecosystem services in response to extreme climatic events. So we're looking, basically, at a project which will, um, with our partners, looking at the extreme rainfall events impossible and looking at future-proofing our, our catchment management plans, carrying out a cost-benefit analysis, and the vehicles to deliver that are hopefully going to be Elwick, but also PR14, which is the water company funding for river catchment management. Okay, thank you very much. Fantastic.